Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start our Sunday Gita class with some Gita mantras first. Pratai Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayan Swayam Vyasen Gratitam Puran Munina Madhe Mahabharatam Advaita Maritvashi name Bhagavati Mashta Dashadhyayane Amutwam Anusandhami Bhagavata Gita Bhavtveshini Namo Astute Vyas Vishal Buddhe Full Arvind Ayat Patra Nether Yenta Vyabharat Tailpur Naha Prajwalito Gyan Mea Pratipaha पर पान पारी जाता है तो त्रवेत्र एक पान है ज्ञान मुद्रा एक कृष्णा है गीता अमृत दुहे नमः सर्वोपनिषदों का वो दोगदा गोपाल नंदना पार्थो वच्चा सुधीर भोगता दुगदम गीता अमृतम महत वसुदेव वसुतम देवम कंस चानूर मर्दनम देव के परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगत गुरुम भीष्म द्रोण तटा जयद्रत जला गांधार नीलोत पला शल्ले ग्रावते कृपेन वाहने करने न वेला कुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोर मकरा दुर्योधन अवर्तने सो तीर ना कलु पांड वही रन नदी के वर्त का केशवा पारा शरीर वच्चरोज मलम गीता अर्थ गंधोट कम नाना क्यानक केशरम हरि कथा संबोधन अबोधितम लोके सज्जन शत पदै रह रह पेपिए मानम मुदा बुयाद भारत पंक जम कलिमल प्रधुंसी नश्रे यसे मुकम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंग्यते गिरम यत कृपात महम वंदे परमानंद माधवम यम ब्रह्म वरुण इंद्र रुद्र मरुता हस्तुन वंती दिव्येस्तवे वेदे सांग पद क्रमोपनिष्दे गायन्ति यम सामगा ध्यान वस्ते तद्गतेन मनसा पश्यन्ति यम योगिनो यस्यंतम् न विदुसुर असुरगना देवाये तस्मे नमः टुडे वी गेना स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर चैप्टर फोर्टीन Sorry about that. So chapter 14, Gunatre Vibhag Yoga. So we have been told so far that the soul, spirit, functioning through the matter brings the expression of an individual who lives his experiences in the world. And the soul is everywhere in everybody. And the difference is only in the Prakriti. So this chapter describes the nature of the Prakriti, which is called material energy, which is the source of the body and its elements. And that's why the origin of both the mind and the matter, material nature is constituted of three Guns, that's what we are going to learn. Three guns. Sattvic, Rajsik, and Tamsik. These are the three guns. So the body, mind, as well as the intellect are made from this Prakriti, material energy. So that's why they possess these three modes also. And the mix of these modes in our being determines the color of our personality. So that means predominantly are we sattvic, rajasic, or tamasic at any given time. So the mode of goodness, which is called sattvic, is characterized by peacefulness, well-being, virtue, and serenity. That's sattvic. And mode of passion or rajasikta gives rise to endless desires, endless ambitions of worldly enhancements. And the mode of ignorance, the tamasikta, is the cause for delusion, 
laziness, intoxication, and excessive sleep also. And where does the liberation lies? Or the moksha, or the salvation, or the freedom? It lies in transcending all these three modes. Lord Krishna reveals a simple solution for breaking out the bondage of these gunas. The Supreme Lord is transcendental to three guns and if we attach ourselves to God, then our mind will also rise to the divine platform. So if our mind is attached to the tamsikta, we suffer. So when we transcend the, even the sattvic, we are really in that higher realm. We saw in chapter 13, the, there was a verse number 22, where Lord Krishna said, the Purush seated in matter experiences the guns born of matter. So this is the explanation for the observed variety of experiences in life. So this gives us a truly scientific explanation as to why the soul, when expressed through matter, manifests itself differently from experience to experience, from expression to expression. So it's all because of the gunas. So these three in different proportion influence our mind, our intellectual caliber, and every individual gets influenced by it. So that's why there's a distinct flavor of personality in all of us. So in other words, all three are present in everybody, but from a person to person, their proportion slightly differs. So that's why the distinct aroma in character, difference in the conduct or behavior we see in each one of us. Bhagavad Gita being a discourse upon the science of self-perfection has to be extremely logical in the development of the theme. That's why we see the connection between the verse to verse and between the chapter to chapter. So ideas hinted in the previous chapter are taken by one by one in the following chapter. So that's why this material energy was mentioned in the previous chapter and now further elaboration on this material na nature, this prakriti in this chapter. So these three guns, sattvic, rajasic and tamasic, they function in each one of us and each seeker must know the art of subjectively diagnosing them in himself or herself. So that means all this detail is for our use, not to judge others. And diagnosis is generally accomplished through the observations of symptoms, which are manifested. So that's why he is going to tell us what are the symptoms of these three guns. So when we carefully study this chapter, we will see that a, there's a secret capacity of detecting within ourselves the most powerful tendency that rises up in our mental life at any given moment. Anybody who is very sensitive about it, like what is really happening in my mind? Why my emotions are like that? We'll be able to discard all the wrong impulses, immoral tendencies, unethical urges and animal passions. And a seeker can keep himself safely balanced in the righteous living in self-control and purity also. So in summary, I can say that this chapter is an exhaustive handbook of instructions explaining the working of the subtle body. Okay, and the subtle body is mind, intellect, 
the deeper layers of our mind and the ego. Man buddhi chitankar. <clears throat> we will see some tips also are given as how we can readjust ourselves. When our inner mechanism is not working properly. Because sometimes people start to walk on this beautiful path, but they stop. Because they don't know what is really happening. How should they adjust? So that's why I said that a serious seeker will stick with this, all these tips also, and try to understand his or her own subtle body. So a knowledge of this chapter assures us of a steady progress on our path. Because there are very secret methods which will be introduced, which we can apply during our sadhana. So that's why, in my opinion, this chapter is extremely important for all of us. So it starts out with the Lord Krishna's words. This is verse number one. Param bhuya pravakshyami jnana nam jnanam utmam yat gyatva munyaha sarve param siddhim itagata param means supreme. Bhuya again. Pravakshyami will declare jnana nam of all the knowledges. Jnanam knowledge utmam the best. Yat means which Gyatva having known Munya, the sages. Survey all Param Supreme Siddhim to perfection. Itaha, after this life, Gata, gone. Lord Krishna says, I will again declare that supreme knowledge. The best of all knowledge is having known which all the sages have attained supreme perfection after this life. So this is the promise he's making. Even though he has said before also, that's why he says, again, I'm telling you, because these deep truths, spiritual truths, are to be constantly repeated again and again. So that's why this chapter is being opened with a declaration by the Lord, that again shall I tell you, again. And the purpose of repetition, we can understand because one time it's told, it does not go into our depth of understanding. And especially it is so important when he says the supreme knowledge, which is better than all other knowledges. All other knowledges means the secular knowledges. There's so much we have learned in our schools, colleges, from our parents, but this is a deeper knowledge. The subject matter is very deep, highest knowledge. Without this knowledge, nothing else makes sense. That's why he says, having known which all the munis have attained to the highest perfection. And who is a muni? Sometimes when we say the muni word, we think a person living in the jungle with a long beard eating roots and berries, that's a muni. No. Muni means mananashil. That means a person of refle reflection and contemplation. Mananashil. So when we reflect, when we contemplate, when we th think deeply about this life, we are munis. So after this life, what does that mean? Because this is what is, it is promised here, that after this life, sometimes we take this declaration too literally. And we think that perfection can be attained only after we die. So that means while we are living, we cannot really become perfect. No, that's not what it means. After this life really means at the end of our egocentric misconception of life. That means if we think we are the body, 
And we stop thinking that, we realize we are not the body. We truly know that we are not the mind and the intellect. We are not what we have achieved in the material world. So that is after the life he is talking about. At the end of our egocentric misconception of life. So even in our life we find, don't we end our wakefulness when we go to sleep? And when we wake up, then we are done as a sleeper. So there's an ending of one phase and entering into the other. Okay. So a knowledge of the three goons and their behavior will help us on this path. That's what he's telling us. So let's look at verse number two. Idam gyanam upashriti mam sadharmyam agata sarge api na upajayante pralle na vyathanti cha. Idam means this, gyanam knowledge, upashriti, having taken refuge in. Mam means my sadharmyam. That means of similar nature. Sadharmyam. Agata, having attained to. Sarge at the time of creation. Api means also, na means not. Upjayante are born. Pralle at the time of dissolution. Na means not. Vyathyanti are disturbed. Cha means and. They who, having refuge in this knowledge, have attained to my being are neither born at the time of creation nor are they disturbed at the time of dissolution. So that means who has realized correctly the deep significances what he's talking about can reach the state of perfection. That is attainment to my being. That's what Lord Krishna says. That means has understood that I am the Atma. Atma is never created and it's never destroyed. So identification with the Atma. And whenever Lord Krishna uses the first person singular I in Bhagavad Gita, he is indicating the state of spiritual perfection. And spiritual perfection is that yoga yukta, that oneness with God. So the theme of this chapter is a thorough study of the play of the gunas because the guns, they bind us down to the lower plane of prakriti. And even the ego is the prakriti. So the purpose is to rise above the prakriti, not to drown into this prakriti. Okay? So... These three guns are indeed the cause of the bondage. A knowledge of them will illumine the path out of bondage. So this word sadharmya means that they will acquire a similar divine nature <clears throat> as God himself. When the soul is released from the bondages of the maya, it comes under the dominion of yoga maya. God's divine yoga maya energy. The divine energy equips it with God's divine knowledge. God's divine love. God's divine bliss. As a result, the soul becomes of the nature of the God. So that's how it acquires Divine God like qualities. So, this word sadharmyam is a, is a very deep word actually. Sadharmyam. So, a seeker, <clears throat> a sadhaka who has, through meditation, because he talked about meditation in earlier chapters. So, meditation is the technique he has given it to us. So, we have to master the mind through the meditation. And ultimately, we have to transcend the mind. 
And we have to reach beyond the ordinary realms of the consciousness. So then you don't feel finite. You don't feel small. And this is what is indicated here when he says, neither are they born at the time of creation. Because what is a creation? Creation is a trick of the mind. And when we are no more expressing through the mind, no longer conditioned by it, we cannot have the experience of creation. Creation can be for other people, but you are not disturbed by it. And the same thing goes for the dissolution too. Dissolution is not happening to the Atma. By definition, it can never. So when you identify with the Atma and the Paramatma, the creation or the dissolution, they do not affect you. Because both of them are the tricks of the mind. So you are projecting the world, the world of creation, thought by thought. So if you are drowned in your thoughts, sure, you will be tossed around in the creation. But when you transcend the mind, you realize the self and the infinite nature. And you see that there is no creation, nor shall we feel ourselves as having been born. So just understand this. This is a very philosophical, deep point he is making over here. So, nor are they disturbed at the time of the dissolution. Because normally what happens with the dissolution, there's a sorrow. And what is sorrow? sorrow? The sorrows of the destruction are the pangs of death. But when you realize the absolute nature in that state of infinite existence, you can no longer experience either the sorrows of death or the troubles of the but remember the sadhana we have to do. So in order to conquer the mind, we must know exactly the tricks by which mind generally disturbs us. So it's almost like a <clears throat> if you are in a war or even there's a disease, the knowledge of a strategy of our enemy is very essential prerequisite. So if a mind is the one which has bondaged us, so we got to know how we're going to get free of this bondage of the mind. So that's why a thorough knowledge of the goons will be helpful for a serious seeker. Anybody who is trying to master his own mind and reach towards the freedom the moksha. So now we'll see in from the next verse, Lord Krishna proceeds to explain in what way this like almost like a marriage between the knower of the field and the field takes place because these were the terms used in the last verse. Kshetragya and Kshetra. So verse number three. Mam yoni mahad brahm tasmin garbham dadami aham Sambhava sarva bhuta naam tataha bhavati bharat. Mam means my, yoni, the womb. Mahat brahm. Mahat brahm word is used for mool prakriti, the primordial brahm. Tasmin in that, garbham, charm. Dadami place, aham ai. Sambhava, the birth, sarva bhuta naam of all beings. Tataha means, Thereafter, Bhavati is Bharat is for Arjun. My womb is the great Brahm. Okay. In that I place the germ from which, O Bharat, is the birth of all beings. So in the Mool Prakriti, in the primordial Prakriti. So my womb is the great Brahm, the Mool Prakriti. So Lord Krishna is trying to explain the one womb from which the entire universe has arisen. There's another term for this is Hiranyagarabh. So one big womb, one big egg. So the supreme identifying itself with the subtle vasanas 
in, is an individual becomes an individualized ego. As it was explained in chapter seven and eight, the material creation follows the cycle of creation, maintenance and dissolution. During dissolution, souls are like a vimuk. Vimuk means have their backs towards God. That means they remain within the body of a Mahavishnu, it's called. When he desires to activate the process of creation, he glances at the prakriti. It then becomes unwind. And subsequently, the entities, the Mahat, which is talking about over here, and Ahankara, and then from that, the Panch Tanmatras and Panch Mahabhut. And you are familiar with these terms, Panch Mahabhut, those five basic elements earth, water, fire, air, and space are created. The material energy creates various life forms and God casts the souls into appropriate bodies. Determined upon the past karmas. So that's why prakriti is like a womb and souls are sperms. Okay? And these souls are nothing but God. So that's why he says, I do that. So it is said the total vasanas of the world, meaning the total causal body in the womb. It gets impregnated by the Lord. It becomes dynamic. It be expresses itself as the total mind intellect. So the total nature is termed here as the mahat, mahat. The mool prakriti, the total mind intellect equipment, from which is the birth of all beings. If we want to wonder where everything came from, this is where it came from. And these three guns together, they are called maya, because sometimes I use the word maya, sometimes prakriti, sometimes the gunas, it's the same thing. So they are the cause of the universe. If the prakriti wasn't there, there would, wouldn't be any creation. If the Paramatma wasn't there, the God wasn't there, the sperm wasn't there, there wouldn't be any creation. So that's why it said that it's a wedding between these two. So the Maya expressed in the individual person is also called a vidya, ignorance. We use that term also sometimes, especially when we talk about it the yogic philosophy, the yoga sutras. The ignorance is the microcosmic expression of maya. Microcosmic in the smaller sense, individual sense. And the total ignorance, macrocosmic expression, that is maya. So maya and avidya, the same thing. So avidya, at microcosmic and maya, macrocosmic. And the individualized ego <clears throat> is under the control of avidya. Okay, so like a personal at our level, avidya, maya is under the control of Ishwar. Okay, so this is like a, some background in order to understand this chapter fully. <clears throat> Saravyonishu Kontya, this is verse number four. Murtya sambhavanti ya ta saam brahm mahad yoni aham bij prada pita sarav yonishu in all the wombs. Okay. Kontya arjuna murtya forms sambhavanti produced ya means which ta saam there brahm mahat means great yoni womb. Aham I, Bij Prada, seed giving, Pitaha, father. Whatever forms are produced, O Konte, in all the wombs whatsoever. Okay, because normally we look at only the human wombs. No, he says, 
whatsoever, wherever the creation is happening, the great Brahma, Mool Prakriti, is their womb. And I, the seed giving father. So in all wombs, in the living world, infinite varieties of beings are born and continue to live. And we know they are being replaced at every moment by millions of new births. Because we count only the human births. How about the animals? How about the bugs? How about the cockroaches? Millions of. So if the whole world is looked at in one gaze, we find seeding activities of new births. Or even <laughs> when a grass is sprouting, everywhere the birth of an organism is nothing but an expression of the soul through a given matter envelopment. So from the prakriti, the seed was given and it grows. So Lord Krishna as the supreme consciousness, absolute and infinite, declares figuratively over here. I am the father of the universe who places the sperm of life in the womb of nature. A field, because that Kshetra word was introduced to us in the last chapter, a field in itself has no existence without the knower of the field, Kshetra Gye. So knower of the field is the vitalizing principle. And remember that body, mind, intellect are only so much it's a part of the matter. In fact, it's like a jad, inert, unless the consciousness expresses itself through it. And the spirit cannot express itself without the matter either. So, it's like a bulb by itself cannot give us the light. And the electricity flowing through the fire, it's connected with the bulb, cannot give us the light either. So there has to be a wedding between the two, between the Prakriti and the Purusha. So the spirit cannot express itself without the matter and matter is inert without the spirit. So these ideas are summarized in this verse by Lord Krishna. When he says he is the eternal father who impregnates the entire world of matter and arranges the play of life on the stage of the world. Basically that's what he is saying. Aham bij prada pita. And now in the next verse, Lord Krishna is explaining what the guns are, how they bind the soul with the matter to create the individualized ego sense in all of us. Verse number five. Sattvam rajaha tamaha iti gunaha prakriti sambhava nebadanti mahabaho dehe dehinam avyam Sattvam, purity, raja, passion, tamha, inertia. Iti means thus, gunaha, qualities. Prakriti sambhava, born of prakriti, nibidhanti, bind, mahabaho, o mighty armed. Dehe, in the body, dehi nam, the embodied, avyam, the indestructible. Purity, passion, and inertia. These qualities or these guns, O mighty armed, born of Prakriti, bind the indestructible embodied one fast in the body. So, Lord Krishna is now explaining in the next 14 verses how Prakriti binds the soul. Because we often wonder. Soul is ever, ever free, part of God, 
how does it get bound? So this is what he's trying to tell us. Just remember that this is the theme from this verse number five, next 14 verses. Guns born of Prakriti. So clearly he is telling us that these qualities are part of the Prakriti. The concept of Sattva, as I said earlier, is that of perfect purity and luminosity. The opposite of foul darkness called Tamas. So on one end, there is a sattvikta, purity and the luminosity. On the other end, it is a darkness. And rasikta is in between. Like a dusky color of rajas. So these guns are associated with light, the red color, and the darkness. Sometimes you will see these terms associated with these three guns also. So guns are the three different influences under which every human mind has to play in all these endless varieties at different moments of the changing environment. So these guns are born of prakriti, the matter. Produced by the nature, the field. And they generate a feeling of attachment. <laughs> and successfully, what do they do? They delude the indwelling self. And not only delude, the chain it also chain this Atma. And what happens? Atma just goes into the cycle of birth and death in a stream of constant change and pain. So remember, these guns are not associated with the Atma. You can never say that Atma is Sattvic or Rajasik or Tamsik. Only the Prakriti is. They belong to the Prakriti. That's what he's trying to tell us. Satum Raja Tama Iti Guna Prakriti Sambhava. The guns have no separate existence as attributes inherent in a substance. So all that we can say is that they are as many different mental climates in which our mind behaves so differently. from each other also, from a situation to situation also. When you are in your temple room, you feel pretty sattvic. You go to the temple or you're doing some seva, you feel pretty sattvic. But the minute uh, there is some kind of a two people, they start to argue what is the state of mind? So this mental climates in which the mind behaves so differently from each other according to our given moods. But they are governed by predominating guns at any particular mood or moment of observation. Predominantly sattvic person, even in argument, can keep cool. So that's why we got to work on our subtle body to bring it towards the sattvikta more and more. Outer conditions we cannot predict. But inner condition, we should have it in control though. That's why it's very important for a seeker to work on this. These goons are like cords. Just like a cord binds, these goons bind the spirit or the soul to matter and create in the infinite spirit the painful sense of limitation and sorrow. Binding is all, always painful. 
So that's why sorrow is associated with it. Even though the soul is infinite, all pervading, can never be contaminating or can never be diluted. But we feel diluted, we feel finite because of these guns. The eternal life functioning in the matter gets, as it were, bound to the limitations or even go through the delusory experiences because we feel entangled by these gunas. So the embodied self through indestructible in its identifications and attachments with the body feels the changes in the body. We think that Atma is feeling the changes. Actually, the changes are only in the Prakriti because we are identifying ourselves with the body. So this delusion is maintained in each one of us. And this is all due to the play of the guns. In the following verses, three verses, very clearly, one gun at a time, Lord Krishna is explaining to us, how do we feel bound by these guns? Like, how does the Satvikta binds us? How does the Rajsikta binds us? Then how does the Tamsikta binds us? So we'll see that in the next three verses next time. So that is like an influence of the gunas. We all can see that how important this topic is for a serious student. If we want to really get out of it, if we got to attain this ultimate goal of life, we got to remember that. So we'll look at that next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnase Purnamadae Purnameva Vishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much for coming. <clears throat>